Good morning. Oh, I think we can do better than that. Good morning. Hey, yeah, look at that. That's awesome. And welcome to First United Church again. Our first Sunday in February. For those gathering at home, uh, welcome near and afar. We will be joining in Holy Communion today. So if you're at home and you have cup and bread prepared, that'll be great uh, for us to all join in at that time. But again, as we get started this morning on our first Sunday in February, let us now rise as we are able in mind, body, or spirit and join in our call to worship together. Our call to worship is inspired by Psalm 147. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God. We lift up our eyes. We wait upon our God, our healer, our creator, our abundance and love. To whom can we compare our eternal? Our God lifts us up, covers our heads, makes grass to grow and rivers to run. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God. Song of praise is fitting. Let us worship God together. Indeed, let us do so as we pray now our prayer of invocation together. Everlasting God, creator of the ends of the cosmos, you who spread the heavens like a curtain and created us to tend the earth, who gathers us in the shelter of your love and renews our strength, that with wings as eagles we might not grow weary as we walk with you, we pray in the power of your Holy Spirit and eternal name. Be present with us now and forevermore. Amen. Our opening hymn then is We Cannot Measure How You Heal. It's from Worship in Song, which is the little green hymnal in or around your seat. And it's number 3139, Worship in Song 3139. We Cannot Measure How You Heal. Please be seated. Let us now join in a time of prayer of confession together. We are broken. God, heal us. 
We are sinners. God, forgive us. We are anxious. God, take away our fears. We are greedy. God, remind us. We are arrogant and prideful. God, humble us. We are yours, O oh God. Do not forget us. Amen. That was in our program. The words are different on the screen. So let us do it again and read through the program together. So in your bulletin, we'll do the prayer of confession together in the bulletin. We are broken. God, heal us. We are sinners. God, forgive us. We are anxious. God, take away our fears. We are greedy. God, remind us. We are arrogant and prideful. God, humble us. We are yours, O oh God. Do not forget us. Amen. Hear now these words of assurance. God indeed has guaranteed us the grace and love that comes through the salvation offered by our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us live into this love. Let us carry forth this love. Let us be freed, forgiven, and graced by God. Amen. Amen indeed. And while it's not in your bulletin, we are going to do a time of peace. See, we're just trying to keep you all on your toes this morning, all right? <clears throat> Around here, this time of year, our time of peace, we like to do elbows of peace because we all know uh, and all have experienced it in our families and other people's families. There's COVID, there's RSV, there's flu, there's colds, there's pneumonia, there's the list goes on and on. And so please, just a nice elbow of peace. If it's your own family and you want to give them a hug, that's completely up to you, okay? I'm not going to. If you still want to give your own family an elbow of peace, then please do. But uh, be kind. Remember, be kind. And of course, if someone is sitting by themselves and just wants to take this reflective moment and be in peace, it may be they don't want to share or uh, have others share. And so just a prayer of peace for those. And of course, those joining us from afar, a prayer of peace with you as well. Let us rise as we are able now and share in God's peace together. Can you put the full screen on so we can see the congregation?
<laughs> well, and as we uh, join in peace and welcome each other in God's peace, it's so wonderful that we can join here and afar and join in truly worshiping our God together in community. And as we continue to do that now, we will go on to our scripture readings. And our scripture readings this morning will be read by Deborah. Thank you, Deborah. Good morning. The scripture always sounds better after everyone's peaced. So peace out, right? We have a friend who says that all the time. The first reading today is Isaiah 40, 21 through 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is God who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when God blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my eagle, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? God, who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because God is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O oh, Jacob, and assert, O oh, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. God does not faint or grow weary. God's understanding is unsearchable. God gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The second reading is 1 Corinthians 9, 16 through 23. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a wage. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my wage? Just this that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all so that I might gain all the more. To the Jews I became as a Jew in order to gain Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law so that I might gain those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not outside God's law, but am within Christ's law, so that I might gain those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, so I might gain the weak. I have become all things to all people, 
that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I might become a partner in it. Our next hymn then is Make Me a Channel of Your Peace. It's from the faith we sing, the little black hymnal in or around your street. Number 2171, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace. Words will also be on the screen. Welcome all the children up for the children's message, or those who are young at heart. Just one sec. Just give me one sec. Good morning. Good morning, ah, and, and we're like, on a street right now. We're on a street right now, Zachary said. Yeah. Good. Say good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Can you say good morning? Good morning. All right. Oh. Good morning. All right. And how do we respond? Yeah. All right. So, kiddos, I want to sit down for a second with you all. Is that okay? I'm going to sit over here, and you all can sit over there. And I just want to spend some time this morning and ask how you're all doing. How are you doing? Good. Can you say that in the microphone? Let's pass the microphone and say, how Good. are you doing? Good. 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 Four goods. Oh, how am I doing? I'm doing good too. Thank you. <laughs> well, what does it mean to be doing good? We ask this question about how you're doing. What does that mean to ask someone how you're doing? Because we, we just ask this question all the time, right? How are you doing? And what does it mean to do something? Oh, yeah, here, can you pass the microphone down, please? Can you say that in the microphone? If you're being bad or good. If you're being bad or good, right? That is doing something. You could be doing something. But what does it mean to... Okay, yeah, say that in the microphone. How you're feeling. How you're feeling, yeah. What does it mean to do something, though? Does it mean you just sit here? No. No. It doesn't mean you just sit here. So when we ask someone, how are you doing, what are we actually asking them? Yeah. How is it that you are able, being, and doing something, right? Can't use doing in the definition. How can we say it? 
How is it that you are active, maybe? Hmm? So isn't it weird that we sometimes respond by saying, good? How are you active? Good. If I asked you, how are you active, what would you say? Good. <laughs> well, there you go. Good. Atreya, what do you think? If I asked you, how are you active, what would you say? Would you say, I play basketball? That's how I'm active. Believe it or not, I still play basketball. If you call what I do basketball, but I still try. If you're active, how are you active, Vivian? L, how are you active? Can you say in the microphone, please? I do gymnastics. Let's pass it down to L. How are you active? What do you do? Gymnastics. gymnastics, gymnastics. I'm gonna hold on to it for just a sec, Zachary, and then we'll pass it back down. So you see, like when we're asking people, how are you doing? It kind of is, well, are we actually asking them how they, what they're actively doing? Or are we actually trying to ask them, how are you feeling? What do you think? You look like you thought. Both, maybe, question mark. So it's one of the things that we, want, that we sometimes just let go by, like in our common central Minnesota way. I bet you nine times out of 10, you ask someone out in the public today, they'll either say good or fine, right? Well, we know that that's not always true, right? So what if we asked, how are you feeling? How are you feeling this morning? So let's go around and say, how are you feeling, Atreyu? Into the microphone, Zachary, can you please hand it to Atreyu? Good. Still good. Good. Still good. Good. Still good. Good. Well, good. How about a round of applause? Our kids are feeling good. But what if someone asked you, how are you feeling? Here, I'll take it. What if someone asked you, how are you feeling, and you weren't feeling good? Could you respond? Yes. Yeah? Could you be honest and say, I'm not doing so good today? Yeah. What if you're sick? Yeah. Yeah. And so I wanted to spend this time with you four to say, you are so important to me, to our congregation, to our world, that I want to actually know how you're feeling from time to time. As a pastor, I want you to be active out there and doing as well, so I actually do want to know how you're doing. But from time to time, we're just going to take this time to check in during the children's message, and I want you to be honest with me, and if you're not feeling or doing good, I want you to be able to say that, okay? Can you all do that for me? Can you say on the count of three a big yes? One, two, three. Yes! yes. All right. Congregation, <clears throat> our children are going to trust us enough to share their true feelings and doings with us. Can we trust them enough to be honest with them? Count of three. One, two, three. Yes. All right. Let's pray together. God, as we gather here, as we gather in your essence of who we are, as we long to be known who we are, God, help us to true, be true to ourselves. Help us to be true to each other. Help us to feel and do and respond in love, God, as you have called us to. And in all these things, God, we lift up all of our prayers in your Son's holy name. Let all God's people say, Amen. How about a round of applause for our kiddos? <clears throat> Thank you, kiddos. We could have probably taken like a a little friendly wager before that and asked how they're they're going to respond and we might have been able to check that in right? our gospel reading this morning comes from the book of mark chapter 1 verses 29 through 39 hear these words as jesus goes healing and preaching as soon as they left the synagogue they entered the house of simon and andrew with james and john now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. 
Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. Jesus answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The word of our Lord. Will you please pray with me? Blessed God, indeed, as we gather here today, open our hearts and our ears to your message that we may hear all you long for us to hear and act in all the ways you long for us to act. And may all our things that we do, God, bring you glory. Amen. There was a study done one time, <clears throat> excuse me, where they took two groups of missionaries and they sent them to a village to try and convert people in the village. And the two groups were told to do two very different things. Group A was supposed to just go and preach and proselytize and bring the word to the people and just do that and that alone. Group B was supposed to go in the villages, work alongside, move in, have families, settle down, and then if asked about where they worship or how they worship, they could share in the gospel message. The studies came back and overwhelmingly, the numbers of people who had converted were out sourcing and out overwhelmingly in group B, like 10 to one versus group A. Because the group people in group B actually got to know the people in the community, actually got to feel and live with the people in the community, and actually got to then, as a product of natural sharing with one another, share the gospel message. Whereas group A, when they asked the villagers about group A, said they were standoffish and aggressive, and they didn't want to be a part of that. I share the survey as an opportunity for us to learn a lesson about this that Paul tells us is for the sake of the gospel in 1 Corinthians. Because Paul has this great paragraph in there that Deborah read at the end where he says, with the Jews, I became a Jew. With the people of the law, I became a person of the law. With the weak, I became someone who is weak. Paul was taking his message out to the people and was becoming part of the people to share the gospel message. Why? Because as that survey, or as that study showed, and as we know, if we were to go out and just start yelling and preaching and calling people, <clears throat> we might get a few people who would be conflicted or converted, right? But most people are going to be like, whoa, right? Same gospel, different approaches. And it's not so important necessarily about saying, hey, we've got to go out and convert people and we've got to do this because otherwise the gospel is going to go away and there's not going to be a church and we won't have this or that and the other thing. But it's more important is about meeting people where they are at. Because this is what Christ is calling us to do in our lives when we're told to love our neighbor as ourselves. It doesn't say, go to your neighbor, tell them what they're doing wrong, tell them what is right, and then that's how you love them, right? It says, love your neighbor as you yourself have been loved. We hear in the gospel passage today that Christ is healing people immediately. Like this is right as his ministry has begun. He is healing people. 
The whole town, I don't know if you heard that in there, the whole town is gathered outside his door. All right? Think about if all of Little Falls was gathered outside your door and you had to heal each and every one of them. All right? And Jesus is going through this. And in the morning he goes to pray because he obviously couldn't make it through everyone by that time because then the disciples come up and they say, hey, where have you been, Jesus? People are looking for you. And Jesus doesn't go back and heal the people that he's already been with. He says, let's go to the other neighboring countries and places. So this message is about meeting people where they are at, but it's also about going out and experiencing people where they are at. You see, Peter, or Paul rather, tells us for the sake of the gospel, and I got to tell you about Paul, his most successful missionary journeys were not when he would go into town and immediately go to the synagogue or the temple and be preaching and saying, you all got to convert to Christianity or whatever we're calling this, the way is what it was called in Paul's day. You've all got to convert to this and you've got to be followers of Jesus and you've got to give all your possessions over to the church and you've got to sell everything and you've got to do X, Y, or Z. When he did that, in those cities he was beaten and put in jail and thrown out of town if he was lucky. Almost killed in a couple of times. The places where he was successful, like in our reading today in Corinth, are places where he went and he became a fisherman, or he became a leather worker, or he became a carpenter, or he became X, Y, and Z in that town, worked alongside the people. And then when they said, hey, I know that you've got this message, then share the word of Christ for the sake of the gospel. This is the second part, right? What is the gospel? Gospel is this word that comes down to us and we throw it around a lot and we, we know about gospel music. We know about things that are true. We say that's the gospel truth, right? But gospel comes down, it it's actually comes from Old English, which is good spell, uh, and then because we didn't quite understand how the Old English was using the word good, we thought it was said God, so we had Godspell, and that's how we get gospel. But it actually comes all the way back from the Old Greek, which is evangelion, which means to share and spread the message. Okay? Of good news is what it comes translated as. So is it about this book that we have, these four books, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Is it about people understanding that? Is it about taking a Bible and throwing it at somebody and saying, there, just shared the gospel with you. Hope you can read. Hope you know where that is in there. No, it's about the gospel. God's love shared with us through this table and the sacrifice, through coming into our world to forgive us our sins, to being the grace that is unconditional, the love that is unconditional, Christ's revelation to the world that God so loved our world that he became human in order to save all of us. How do you Share that with people. How do you go with people and live for the sake of the gospel? Because it's one thing to just be able to go and tell them and have them be <clears throat> understanding and be like, oh yeah, I get that. I understand that. But it's so much more effective if we meet people where they're at, if we love people for who they are, and if by our actions, like we talked about with the kiddos, actually engage with others in how they are doing and how they are feeling and share that God meets them there. Right? God doesn't ask us to be perfect. God doesn't ask us to meet God on Mount Ararat or Mount Sinai or Mount Hole in the Day. Right? God asks us 
to be present, to be open, and to receive God when God comes. There's a famous quote by Gandhi that really alludes to this. And it's so important when we think about taking communion, too, as part of sharing the gospel message. And that's that for some people, God can only be known through bread. And what Gandhi is talking about there is that there's some people in our world that are so hungry, so thirsty, so starving, that they can only know God through what we share with them. Maybe it's a morsel of bread. Maybe it's a cup of juice. Maybe it's even more. Maybe it's a helping hand, a tender hug. Maybe it's a phone call to someone who we haven't talked to in ages. Maybe it's a letter to someone who we've been disgruntled and need healing with. But these are the ways that we share the gospel for the sake of the gospel. Last week, and this we've been journeying along through here with Mark, we've talked about healing, and we've talked about growing, and we've talked about reconciling, and we've talked about coming alongside others for the sake of the gospel. And i got to tell you that this is something, again, that our world desperately needs. And it's not just about converting people to Christianity. Because I got to tell you, like if you ask Jesus, what's, what's more important, that we convert a thousand people or that a thousand people come to know that they are loved? Right? Is it more important that we have every chair in our church filled? Or is it more important that everyone in our community is fed? These are questions that we have to balance with how we do with the gospel. And I bring it up when we're going to go out and do things for the sake of the gospel, that sometimes we think about our world as this place that is so broken and so hurt and so filled with pain that there's nothing that we can possibly do. And I want to inspire us to say that wherever we are, whether we're here in Little Falls, whether we're gathering from afar, there is something we can do for the sake of the gospel. Not the sake of conversion, not the sake of the existence of First United Church, not the sake of you insert program there, for the sake of the gospel, the good news, the revelation of Christ, God's love for God's children. There is something in every community, in every place, inside every one of us that we can do. And we know what it is, folks. We know what it is that we need to do. Because we ourselves know how God has loved us. We ourselves know what has been shared with us for the sake of the gospel. And we are called to share that. And so as we go forth today, as we think about and take communion here in just a little bit, as we go through our prayers and worship today, what is it that God has shared with us, given to us, loved in us, that we want to share with others for the sake of the gospel? Amen. We now come to a time of celebrating Holy Communion. I, we have an invitational hymn this morning. And so this is a new one for us. Feed Us, Lord, is from Worship and Song, number 3167. And so I'm just going to ask if, Maxine, you could play through it once so we know the rhythm and how we're going to do it. And then we'll all join in. Worship and Song, again, is that little green hymnal in or around your seat. And this is worship and song number 3167, Feed Us, Lord. Okay. 
thanks for life. Come and lead our hearts, O Lord. And let us continue now with our communion prayer. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God. It's good to give God thanks. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of light, giver of all life, source of love. Your song of wisdom rang out before the world began. Your ancient love still touches us and stirs within us. Even when we turn away from you, you keep faith with us. You call us to be witnesses of the way and prepare those in the wilderness. You guide us, provide for us, and call us to repentance. To the light of your peace, our Savior, Jesus Christ, you claim us as your beloved, setting a table for all who hunger, sharing a cup with all who are thirsty. And so it is that we sing your praise as we say together, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. This morning we are going to do things a little bit differently. During the words of institution and remembrance, normally I just speak. But today we are going to journey through it together. As we do so, feel the importance of these words. Feel yourself engaging in the sake of the gospel. Let us remember together that vision of God's reign shown to us in Jesus at the table. Sharing food with followers and friends. Saints and sinners. Crowds of thousands on the hillside. And a few friends in an upper room. The night before he died, he had supper with his companions. He took a loaf of bread and after giving it, And after breaking it, giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he passed it to them, saying, This is the cup I have for you. Take and drink of it. Do so in remembrance of me. Through this bread and cup, Jesus lives within us. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Hear now these words of the prayer of consecration. Holy God, descend your spirit upon these gifts of grain and grape, that they might be for us the presence of the living Christ. Pour out your spirit upon us so that we might be reflections of your likeness in this world that others might know the blessings of living in communion with you and one another, through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor are yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And let us join now in our Lord's Prayer song, worship and song number 3068.
This is the oak. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat of it and do so in remembrance of him. This is the cup of the blood of the new covenant poured out for you. Take and drink of it and do so in remembrance of Christ Jesus. I want to invite the servers to come up. If you could please come forward. I'm going to get a little hand sanitizer for myself here. We're going to have two sides again with our tray and cup. And so when you come up, please come up the center aisle. I will have the hand sanitizer on the table if you want it. You can help yourself to some there. And then we'll go to each side. Our bread, again, is gluten-free, dairy-free uh, bread so that all can feel welcomed to this table. Our cup is grape juice, so again, all can feel welcome at this table. So come as we get set, for all has been prepared.
And now let us join in our prayer of thanksgiving. We have been fed, Holy One, by your presence. We have been led, Eternal One, by your light. We have been called our Savior to share in this table. Now send us forth, O God, in faith, in hope, and in love. Amen. As we come to a time of joys and concerns uh, and pastoral prayer, silent prayer, I want to excuse the children to go off to Sunday school. So Deanna and Mary Lou have Sunday school today, so they'll be leading you on. Have fun. Bye. <laughs> And I want to up, open it up to uh, a time for joys and concerns. I have a few to share here, and I don't want to step on anybody's toes, but these are just what have come to me through this week. And so I uh, first want to lift up Deborah's sister's granddaughter, June Bernal. Bernal? Burnell. Uh, she's a two-year-old who has cancer, had successful surgery this week. So prayers for continued healing and recovery, but no two-year-old should have to be going through that either. Cindy West needs prayers for new cancer treatments. Uh, Joyce Kamrowski needs prayers. She has pain from head to toe, and they're trying to figure out what that is. Uh, I want to lift up upcoming surgeries. Buck is having a surgery, and so keep him in your prayers. And Barb Barons will be having knee surgery on February 15th, so please keep her in your prayers. Those are the joys and concerns that have been shared with me. Are there other joys and concerns in our congregation this morning? Yes, my, my mother and dad are gonna have their 67th wedding anniversary next week. To everyone here who's ever loved a dog or a cat, tomorrow we're gonna be putting down our little Dora. She's been with us for 14 years. She's been a true companion. When Gary went off to North Dakota, we got her so that I wouldn't be alone. So prayers for dogs in heaven. And all dogs do go to heaven. I'd like to ask for prayers for the doctors who will be performing surgeries. Thank you. Other prayers, joys or concerns for us to lift up this morning. I just have a couple of joys to mention. Um, after seeing the Little Falls Hall of Fame and congratulations to uh, people that were elected or inducted. Well, let's not paint this over, he's here. Yes, Congratulations, I Mike. Yep. Best wrestler in the history of the world and coach. I think that's what it is, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, but also, I think back to when I was in school, and to me, the superintendent at the time, Doug Rossi, Jim Hill as the high school principal, um, they really set the tone for your lives. And at a time when teachers are at times brought down, um, I think that they should all be greatly appreciated for the impact that they have in everybody's lives. So thank you to all of them for that. What a great joy to lift up all of our teachers, indeed, and administrators and support staff, everyone. Other joys or concerns for us to lift up this morning? I have a joy. Okay, are there any online? Yes, there is. My parents Kathy are and Doug. having their 60... If you're unmuting yourself, just go ahead and share your prayers and the congregation can hear you. My uh, I have a story. Parents... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Cindy. My parents are having their 67 wedding prayers online next week. And I have a joy to share also. 
Um, Doug is healing. His ankle is healing well. And he'll also be transferred over to St. Otto's on Wednesday. Oh, good to hear. That must mean that they can take people in again at St. Otto's, which is yes. a prayer to share as well. COVID's been going around there. Praise God for that. Any other prayers, joys, or concerns? All right, seeing none, let us pray together as we bow our heads. Blessed God, indeed, we come here with joys and concerns on our hearts. We come here, God, and we come on Sundays, indeed, to learn about the gospel, about what the sake of the gospel is, about what God's revelation is. We come and we experience holy communion. We get filled by bread and cup. We hear word and sing song, God. We have fellowship. And then we go out in the world. God, when we leave this place, let everything that we have experienced, heard, consumed, taken in, let out. Let everything, God, be shared with us out in this world for the sake of your love, God that this world so desperately needs. For the sake of your forgiveness, God, which the people of our world and we ourselves need to hear, not just on Sundays, but on a daily basis. The food and drink that this world needs, God, is indeed literal food and drink, but also, God, the spiritual, eternal waters that flow from you and manna that comes from you. And so, God, for your sake, for our sake, for the sake of the gospel, fill us to go and share your love that you shared with us. We lift up all the prayers that we have lifted up today, spoken and shared in community, and we also now pray in silence, God, for those prayers which are too deep for words to reach. And let all God's people say, Amen. Announcement time. Are there announcements for us to share in our congregation? I have announcements, but I'm going to go last. So, are there announcements for us to share together this morning? Yes, Carol Ann, do you want to come all the way up or you want the portable? Hey, all right. What wonderful fellowship we had serving the luncheon for the <clears throat> Nancy Olson family. We had set enough volunteers. We all worked well together and we accomplished a lot. Wonderful bars. We're still going to enjoy some of those bars. Mm -hmm. But now I want to have some fun. And Valentine's Day is coming. And I have a list of shut-ins that need cards. So I have picked up, remember how much fun it was to get those little cards when you were in elementary school and you made your shoe box and got all these cards in it. Well, I'm going to be distributing cards for you to sign today and next Sunday during fellowship. So I can include those in the card from the church. Thank you. Thank you, Carol Ann. Other announcements for us to share today? All right, on to my list of announcements. Page one, no, I'm just, <laughs> not quite that many. Um, just a few, a couple of announcements. I forgot to mention this last week, but Don West got a pair of new hearing aids 
and they didn't work for him. So he didn't barely wear them at all, except to find out they didn't work for him because they didn't fit his ear or, or something like that. And then, so then he ordered a new pair. So he has a basically brand new set of hearing aids. And so if you are someone who needs hearing aids and you would like a basically brand new set of hearing aids, hearing aids or at least want to try it out, and I don't know if he still has them because I'm a week behind here in announcing this, but reach out to Don West, and uh, if you need his number, it'll be in the directory, and it, you can get it from the office. But reach out to him and contact him about that. Uh, I want to give a big thank you out to the people who gathered to take down the greens. And I also want to thank our uh, team that does the colors for changing us over to greens. And so sometimes we just go through the seasons and except for Pentecost, when I think we really see what's going on at Pentecost, right? When the big red ribbons are up, sometimes we don't really know how much work goes into the sanctuary. And so thank you to all the people in the many hands that have helped with that. Uh, other announcements to share is that Ash Wednesday is coming up quickly. It's going to be February 14th is Ash Wednesday. So it's going to be one of these great times in our life where we get to celebrate a Hallmark created holiday in Valentine's Day and our liturgical holiday of Ash Wednesday. I'm sorry, my own personal beliefs came out in that. I'm sorry. We get Valentine's Day and Ash Wednesday are the same day this year. And so, but we are going to have our Ash Wednesday service here at the church at 6 p.m. And then going forward on Wednesdays, here's a sign up sheet that will be back on the table. Uh, we're going to have our Wednesday night. We did it last year. We did it potluck suppers instead of simple soup suppers. And I got to tell you, I loved the diversity and the food that was brought and how much people just loved sharing what they could create and share with others. So we're going to do it potluck style again this year. Those suppers begin on February 21st, and those will be on Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. What the sign-up sheet area, and this is all spelled out on here too, so if you go back to the table and you don't remember what I said, it's on this as well. The sign-up area on this sheet is for devotionals. And so each Wednesday that we're going to gather together, we're going to have a short devotional, and then we'll have supper together and do cleanup or whatever it needs to be. And so the sign-up sheet will be back on the table. As it says on here, a devotional can be anything. It can be reading scripture it can if you want to give us a sermon that's great if you have music that you want to share perfect if you found a video that week and you're like this is such a great video it, wonderful it can be devotional is the, one of these words that can mean so many things so i encourage you to sign up and uh and get that going i will sign my name for the first one because it's fast approaching so don't worry about that wednesday but then after that i hope that we can fill up the sheet and I hope that we can come together on Wednesday nights as another opportunity for us to gather and share and be with one another communally. All right. That's it for my uh, list of announcements. Did I spur on any announcements in other people? All right. Seeing none, we now come to a time of holy offering. Holy Offering is about us giving back in so many ways, whether that's financially, thank you, your church needs your support, whether that's out in the community, whether that's internally working on who we are so that we can be better with others. Holy Offering represents all these things. So today during offering, let us spend time thinking about, reflecting upon, and wondering just how we can be active in our world for the sake of the gospel.
And now let us rise as we are able in mind, body, or spirit and join in our doxology together. join in our prayer of dedication together. God of all that is, we give with all we have. We offer these gifts as we long for your love to reach our world in need. We share these gifts knowing that with your blessing, they will become so much more. God make it so. Amen. Before we get to our guide, our parting hymn, I just want to say thank you again, Maxine, for being here and playing with us today. Diana, song leading. Rose and Prescott making all of this work as best we can. And the wonderful volunteers you met and were greeted by on your way in. And we will see at fellowship time. Our parting hymn, Guide My Feet, is an African-American spiritual. It's from the New Century Hymnal number 497. We have sung this before, so we know how it goes. Again, the New Century Hymnal is the black hymnal, thick black hymnal in or around your seat. Guide my feet. for us to end our time together this morning by asking God to run our race with us, to be with us, to stand by us, to go forth with us as we go forth for the sake of the gospel. And so, friends, trust that God is with us, that his love provides for us, that the Spirit guides each and every one of our steps, and the peace of Christ fills our hearts, that we could share this with our world as we indeed run this race. Amen. Amen.